It is so good uh, to be in the house of God today. And if you've got your copy of God's Word, would you take that out and turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 39. I always enjoy this kind of first service of the new year to, uh, to release the word of the house. And um, it's just kind of cool how God has done this. I don't know that God will do this every year, but for the past four years, this is how he's, he's worked um, in the life of CFA and our Multiply family of churches. It's usually during the summer. He'll begin to drop some things into our heart and spirit and formulate the word for the house for the year, and we pr begin to pray through that and begin to, to formulate that. And then this is just to the best of our ability, what we're discerning, what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to our community. But here's, here's what I want you to know is that uh, I never want, this has never been a church as a, that has operated this way. We're a Spirit-empowered church. And if you don't know what that means, here's one of the things that, we, that it means. We just, we just believe that everything that happened in the Bible can happen today. So that's kind of a pretty, you know, uh, in, that's just an easy way to know what does this church believe if it happened in the Bible? We believe that it can happen today. And so one of the things that happened in the Bible was God spoke to everybody, like ordinary, average. You didn't have to be a preacher or a priest or a holy man or woman of God. Like God spoke to everybody. And we believe, one of the things that we believe is that God can speak to you. God can speak. That's what being a part of a spirit-empowered church means, is that we believe that God can speak to you. Maybe you've experienced that before. Maybe you've experienced it to varying degrees of certainty. Maybe you're like, I don't, I don't know that I've ever heard from God. How do I do that? And so I want to not only uh, get a word for the house, I want to equip you to receive a word for your house. And you say, well, how do I do that, Pastor? And there's a lot of different ways to hear from God. Maybe we'll teach through some of those in our, in our deeper and our Wednesday Wednesday nights, but here's, here's one way. Can I just tell you one way? Um, there's no way that you can put God first for 21 days and him not speak to you, right? So how many of you are excited and ready? 6 a.m. Let's go. 21 days of prayer. Here we go. Here we go. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to reach over and grab your neighbor's cell phone, and I want you to go ahead and set the alarm to 5 a.m. Go ahead and do that for them. They're going to be up at 4 anyway. They're going to be with Pastor Kevin at the gym. They're going to be there. And so this will be the second thing. So, so uh, I just want to encourage you, like, let's believe together. What could, do, what could God do on the other side of this in your life, in your family's life, in your ministry's life, in your, in your kid's life? Like, whatever you're believing for, what could God do? What could God speak to you? What possible options could he, new options could he open up to you during these 21 days? So 6 o'clock. AM right here in Concord at Davidson. Davidson's got a new location out there. Good Drip Coffee uh, is in the same building, but it's just downstairs. So you don't have to climb 39 stairs to get to that location. And all of Davidson, believe me, all of Davidson is saying a good amen. They can just walk right in to get their coffee and to get their Jesus over the next 21 days. And our online fam, um, cfachurch.com slash 21 days of prayer. And I know that there are uh, multiple people in the house that you're driving to Charlotte or Statesville or uh, you're trying to get the kids off to school on the bus and so you can connect with us and it's got lots of resources there and all kinds of great things. But would you, would to, if, you're, if you're able, if you're able, would you meet us in the house tomorrow morning at six o'clock and we want to begin this process of just starting our year off right and hearing from the Lord. So not only um, do we want to hear a word from the Lord, what I want to do and what I feel like my assignment from heaven, not just today, but really every time that the, every time that the word of God is preached or or taught. And I just want to uh, give some honor because he's here in this service. I'm so, I'm so grateful for many things in this church. And one of the things I'm so grateful for is it has been our uh, kind of tradition of these last several years, the week after Christmas, to have Joe Phillips bring the word. And if you were here last week, you know that that was an amazing word. So can we just thank Pastor Joe and Cecilia and their family and their ministry, JPM Ministries. Um, God's just using them in amazing ways, to, and, he, and he set us up well, uh, set us up so well for this. But, but when, whether Joe's preaching or Steve's preaching or Pastor John in Center City or Pastor Zach or Alex or Wesley or Justin or Kevin, who, whoever it is, whoever is bringing the word, Pastor Brandy, anytime the word is taught, 
or spoken, I want to come into the house of God ready for something to be imparted to me. Okay, and there's a difference. I'm telling you, y'all, uh, uh, I'm, I want some good information. Like, I want to learn things when I don't, I don't know anything about uh, uh, everything about the Bible, right? Like, there's always new things to discover about God, about, like, so I want more information. But in the, in the age of Google and YouTube and podcasts, like, you can get information anywhere. So information is good, and I hope we give you good information but that's not the main reason I'm coming to church or inspiration. I always get inspired during worship or during prayer and just seeing uh, each other and connecting and relationships. That's a source of inspiration. I hope you're inspired every time you come into the house of God. But we don't come just for information. We don't come just for inspiration. We come for impartation. You say, Pastor, what's that word? It sounds like a fancy theological term. Well, the Apostle Paul talks about it. Romans chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. And the Apostle Paul is getting ready to be physically present with the church in Rome, to which he was not physically present. So it's talking about some sort of corporate gathering of believers. So in the context of corporate gathering of believers, this is what Paul says. He says, I long to see you that I may impart, say impart, impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other. And that word to impart, it's a fun word to say, it's meditadomai, meditadomai in the Greek language. And this is what it means. It means to offer so that a change of ownership is produced. A change of ownership is produced. So let me explain it to you this way. It's kind of like the difference between attending a fun dinner party or attending a good Christmas dinner party. And both are good, but in different ways. And there's something that happens in one that doesn't always happen at the other. So, for instance, this past week, Cameron and I have really good friends, uh, friends for, for decades, really. And, and they live in the U.K., so we don't get a chance to see them often. They came home at Christmas time, and we got to have them over for dinner. And thanks to my wife, we ate really good food, and we caught up, and we laughed together, and we talked about our, our lives and our current situation. All of that was an absolutely wonderful evening, but at a dinner party, usually when you leave, you had a good time, but you don't leave with something tangible. Like your, your status in life has not changed. You walk out mostly the same as when you walked in. At a Christmas dinner party, you still have your well-fed, you're hopefully entertained, you have a good time, but especially when you attend a Christmas party in the presence of a rock star gift giver, I'm not talking about your aunt that gave you a different color of socks for the 41st year in a row. I'm not talking about your office Christmas white elephant gift that you already have a sticky note put on that, going to re-gift that for Christmas 2020. I'm talking about the Christmas, because every family has one. Every family has the rock star Christmas giver. And you are both in awe of them and a little bit mad at them all at the same time. Because this is the person that on March 13th, Last year at 11.23 a.m., you happen to mention in a side conversation that you walked through Home Depot or Target and you saw this item and they noted it and bought it and gave it to you for Christmas because they were aware of your needs and they knew exactly what you needed for that season and that situation. Can I tell you that your God, your Heavenly Father, is the rock star gift giver of all gift givers? The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And so each and every time you come to the house of God, you're not coming to hear a good story. You're not coming to hear a good song. You are coming for your God, your heavenly father, to impart something spiritually into your condition that when you walk out of the house, you walk out different than when you walked in. Come on, how many people in the house are thankful for a God that will impart things to them? God knows what you need. That's why I don't ever want to miss church because I know I need something each week. I need something. And so when we're in the house of God, we come for an impartation of the spirit. Here's the bad news. I'm still in my introduction. The good news is when I finally do get to the message, the actual message is not that long. And so we'll get you downstairs to Ron's chicken as quickly 
as possible before you start your uh, 21 days of prayer and some fasting mixed in with that. But let's, uh, let's be good bears and let's stock up. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's, let's stock up today so we'll be ready for tomorrow because you'll be, you'll be uh, a little bit grumpy tomorrow. But you'll be blessed, but you'll be a little get, bit grumpy if you start some fasting tomorrow. Um, but let me, ma- let me mention this too, a little bit behind the scenes. Um, how God has usually spoken the word of the year. So let me rewind a little bit. Uh, 2017, our word of the year was, and a lot of, a lot of you are new, so let me, let me catch you up to speed. Uh, 2017, our word of the year was crossover. Out of the book of Joshua, crossover into all the land and all the promises. So we needed crossover faith to take new territory. But you can cross over and not fully occupy. In 2018, God said that we were to fully not only cross over into the promises, but fully occupy all of those promises out of Deuteronomy 1.8. And then last year, our word for the year for the house was multiply. So we cross over into the promises. We fully occupy the promises. And then every gift that God gives you, he doesn't want to give you just enough for you. That would be selfish. No, he wants to overflow so there is more than enough to give and he wants to multiply that gift and I would suggest to you that that's a bit of a template if you'll look for it throughout scripture is that we cross over into new territory we fully occupy that territory and we multiply out of that territory so not only does God some behind the scenes things God will speak to anybody who will listen and then God usually speaks in what I what what, uh, theologians would call progressive revelation and that's simply means that the first inkling of what you sense you hear from God is more like a grayscale pencil sketch. It may be kind of fuzzy. You're like, oh, is this God? Is this me? Is this somebody? Like exactly what's going on here. And then when God brings the fulfillment to that promise, it's the high definition, visual, full color uh, uh, picture of what he wants to do. And oftentimes when you look back to that grayscale sketch, you'll, you, you had the concept, but you didn't know. And so there's this progressive revelation. Let me, let me uh, explain this to you just really tangibly. So last year when God said our word for the year was multiply, We had no idea that Center City Church was on the radar for that. So what happened is is God launched Pastor John and Jess out to Charlotte and brought this uh, congregation that we helped to start 10 years ago, brought it back into this multiply family, brought Pastor David and Dara into our family, like this whole different thing. But we we didn't know. And oftentimes when God speaks to you, you'll just know the first step and you just got to obey the first step. And then God will give you the second step and you got to do the second and that'll unlock the third and all of that different things. All that to say, um, God's not even remotely done with multiply in, our, in the house. So, so let me go back to Genesis 128 and just, just tease this a little bit. And God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, and over everything that moves along the earth. See, multiply is the original commanded blessing. Multiply is our calling. Multiply is our command. Multiply is our blessing. Multiply is our destiny. Our response to all of this, our response to crossover, our response to occupy, and our response, especially now, to multiply is what we are sensing. The word of the year for the house for 2020 is, and it's simply this, yes. Say yes. See, that feels good to say, doesn't it? Do you want a second helping of dessert? Yes. Do you want a second cup of coffee? Yes. It just feels right to say yes. So where did this idea of yes came from? Yes comes from the book of Hebrews. So in Hebrews chapter 11, um, it's it's what they call the hall of faith. It's kind of like the hall of fame, but it's like the spiritual hall of fame. So in Canton, Ohio, every August, they induct the new class into the Hall of Fame, and you have offensive linemen and linebackers and cornerbacks and quarterbacks, and they put on these mustard yellow jackets, and they give speeches, and it's for the best of the best. 
It's for the best, the best safeties and the, the, the best defensive linemen and in baseball in Cooperstown, New York and hockey and golf. And the, but they have this like the country music hall of fame, the rock and roll hall of fame in Cleveland, Ohio, and all of these different hall of fames that it is like these are the best of the best in their profession make it into this hall of fame. And so Hebrews chapter 11 is kind of like that. It's the biblical, it's the spiritual Hall of Fame. A lot of fascinating men and women of God in this chapter. We're going to walk through a lot of their stories over the next several weeks, but let me give you an overview of just some of them. Abel. Abel is in this Hall of Faith. God released worship through him that reverberated through the heavens with a sound more powerful than Hillsong Elevation and Bethel combined. Enoch had a prayer and devotional life that was so amazing that God took him right up to heaven. Noah became one of the greatest architects, designers, builders in history. Oh, and by the way, saved the human race from extinction while he was at it. Abraham and Sarah became the father and mother of one of the greatest spiritual movements of all time. Isaac spoke such powerful blessing over his sons that we still see the multiplication of their lineage thousands of years later. Moses' parents raised a world changer in the midst of a culture of slavery and oppression. And how did God do it? How did God use these people in such an amazing way? I'm telling you, it was not because of their talent. It was wasn't because of their ability, it was not because of their riches, their wealth, their social status, or their heritage or lineage. It was simply that they responded with a yes to God. They lived their life with a holy yes. I think that is one of the best definitions that I have ever heard of faith, because when we think of faith, it can be like, what is this uh, nebulous concept of faith? Here's one of the things that faith is. Faith is saying, yes to God. In fact, I would, I would submit this to you, that faith is not believing that God can do something. I, I don't think that that's what faith is. See, that's called a philosophy. Faith is believing that God can do something through you. And I think that there are too many in the church that have a Christian philosophy, but they don't have a Christian faith. They believe that, it, it, that God can do it. They just don't know that God can do it through them. Let me explain it like this. Go ahead and take out your cell phone. And if you'll open it up to your camera app, and if you will make sure that your camera is facing outward, and as you do that, what our media team is doing is they are now uh, hacking your phone and accessing your camera. I'm just kidding. We don't know how to do that. Google does. And so go I'm just kidding about that, too. Maybe. I don't know. But, um, but go ahead and take it out. Show, show the preacher. Show me your, show me your phone. And, and so cam camera app open and looking outward. And this is just a representation of you, your lens looking outward. And I want you to answer this out loud with yes, because these are not trick questions. Can God heal? Yes. Can God eradicate racial disharmony? Yes. Can God raise up a generation of world changers? Yes. Can God bring renewal and revival? Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to take the little double arrow that is in selfie mode, and I want you to turn your camera around, and I don't want you to look outward. I want you to look right directly into the camera now. Don't look at your neighbor's phone. Look at your own phone. And same questions. Can God, but, well, with a little bit of a nuanced difference, can God heal through you? Wasn't quite as strong, was it? <laughs> and that's what happens. That's what happens. Because we're always one click away from a lack of faith. And can I show you what happens? Is that oftentimes we believe that God can do it. See, our, our, our lack of faith is not a lack of faith in God. I believe that God is holy and omnipotent and he is all powerful and, and he can do it and he can eradicate social injustice and he can teach underprivileged kids to read and he can feed our entire community. The problem is, is when I turn that camera around, what I do is I get my eyes off of my amazing God and I get them onto me. And you know what I see when I look into this camera is a hairline that looks a little bit different than it looked 
in 2019 and I say like, hair, what did I do to you? Why, why, are, you, why are you raising up higher? And I see, I see a blemish on a forehead that ought not to be there on a 45 year old man. And I see a few wrinkles that weren't there. And I see, because when we begin to look at us, we begin to see all of the reasons why God can't do it. But watch this, through the incarnation, God declares, I will not, de I will not do a move of my Holy Spirit apart from humanity. And so if God wants to bring revival, it's going to be through you. God wants to heal through you. God wants to raise up a generation of world changers through you. God wants to teach the next generation to worship. God wants to write a worship song through you. God wants to start a business through you. God wants to write a book through you. God wants to give a million dollars to missions through you. And I declare over you, CFA and Multiply Family, that you will no longer have a Christian philosophy, but you will have a Christian Christian faith, that he is going to do it in you and through you because that's the kind of God we serve. A couple of weeks ago, we were in the, um, our creative room as a, as a staff and I had things written all over the whiteboard and I'd taken the eraser. We were done with that meeting and um, took the eraser and I just started erasing everything. And I don't know what happened to this spot on the whiteboard, but the best that I can explain it is somebody was eating a, um, like, like uh, hotcakes from McDonald's and took one, of their, took one of their pancakes with syrup on it and just stuck it on the whiteboard. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's the same thing in your house. You're like, how did the food get under the couch? When were the children there? Like when you clean your car out, like when did we have McDonald's? Three years ago? There's, a, there's, the, there's the Big Mac from three years ago. Like how did it get there? I don't know. You tell me. But there was a big sticky spot in the middle of the whiteboard. And so my goal was to erase some old stuff. But when my eraser went over the sticky spot, I proceeded to make a mess. It stuck. See, some things started to stick and smear all over that whiteboard. And what I found in life is some stuff will stick to me that I didn't want to stick to me. Have you found this to be through, true as you walk into 2020, that you have a little bit of greed that stuck to you, or a little bit of gossip that stuck to you, a little bit of negativity that stuck to you, a little bit, some bad habits that are still sticking to you. And sometimes, here's what I know, that when we try to erase those ourselves, what ends up happening is we end up making a bigger mess out of the situation than when we started with. But And so as I'm squirting and I'm scrubbing and I'm doing my best to get this off of the whiteboard, in walks somebody with something called a magic eraser. And I don't know what's in a magic eraser. It's probably the reason that our planet will implode someday, all of the chemicals in this magic eraser. But all I know is that when they applied that magic eraser to the whiteboard, it did exactly what the eraser promised. It magically began to disappear. And here's what I know, that we have a magic eraser in our lives that's better than any Clorox 409 combination. It's called the blood of Jesus and it washes me white as snow every single time and so if you walked into the house today with some stuff that is stuck to you and that you wish you can walk out of can I tell you that you serve a Jesus and there is a Jesus here today that will give you a fresh start a brand new go at it a brand new life that is the power of the God that we serve and we got to get our eyes off of ourselves and our faults, and our failures, and our flaws, and all of that. See, you look at this hall of faith. I mean, y'all, this, this is the top of the class. This is the, this is the who's who. This is the senior superlative list over thousands of years in the Bible, and you would think that just maybe that God could have come up with a few men and women with a better pedigree than these people. There's some rough characters in this hall of faith. You look at you look at people like you look at people like Abraham. Abraham, who was the 
father and mother of the greatest spiritual movement of our time. He also took matters into his own hands and gave birth to Ishmael. And it could be argued that one of the greatest curses that we're facing today in our world is a result of his impatience. Sarah laughed at God's promise. Moses killed a guy. David never really fully recovered after that adulterous affair. Rahab was a prostitute. Joseph played emotional games of taunting and revenge on his brothers before forgiving them. And it shows us that God uses deeply flawed, deeply broken, and massively unqualified people. What got them on this list? It was their faith. It was their yes. A life of faith looks like saying yes to God. What could God, what could God do through you? What problem could God solve through you? What disease could God heal through you? What book could God write through you? What life could God impact through you? What neighbor could come to Christ this year through you? What could God do through you? Hebrews 10.39 sets up this hall of fame, this hall of faith like this, and it, it says this, and I want to impart this to you because this is your heritage and this is your destiny. Hebrews 10.39 says, but we are not of those who shrink back. And I speak that over you in the name of Jesus, that when problems come, you will not shrink back this year. When difficulties come, you will not shrink back. When somebody walks up to you and tells you all of the reasons why it can't be done, you will not shrink back. When the enemy gets inside your head and reminds you of all of your faults and failures, you will not shrink back. When every force of hell comes against you, you will not shrink back because that's not who you are. The Bible declares over you, you are not of those who shrink back, but you are those of faith. You are people of faith. You are men and women of God, and God wants to do something amazing through your yes. Would you take out this card at every location? There should be a pen in front of you in just a moment. I'm going to invite you to bring these to an altar and to lay these down before God. And I, 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 just as a tangible, it's a tangible act, if you'll go ahead and sign that and, and date that. A life of faith. If you just hold that after you do that, just hold that card in your hand. A life of faith looks like saying yes to God. Yes. Every single time. Yes. Yes in the light and yes in the dark. Yes in the sunshine and yes in the storm. Yes when you understand and yes when you don't. Yes when you're brave and yes when you're afraid. Yes when you have the money and yes when you don't. Yes every single time Abraham said yes. Sarah said yes. David said yes. Rahab said yes. Over 61 years ago, our founding pastors said yes. Underneath a grand piano, yes. I want you to go to Concord and plant a church. It will be the largest church in the county. Someday it will be a church of 10,000. It wasn't, God, we're not qualified or we don't have the money or we don't have any people or we don't have a building or we don't have a place to park our 17-foot camper. It was simply yes. And today we say yes at every location would you stand to your feet. We say yes to new territory and new frontiers and new adventures. Yes to new life and to fresh starts. Yes to new ways of doing things. Yes to new names relationships and new families coming to Christ. Yes to new possibilities and yes to God doing Here's it my through end. me. Here's you can my
So in just a moment, I'm going to invite you forward to lay this card down at the altar for a couple of reasons. One, I think sometimes it's good just to have a tangible response that gets us out of our routine and to, to reaffirm or maybe for the first time to say yes to Jesus. Here's the second reason. Over the next 21 days, this auditorium is going to be filled with prayer warriors. And we're going to take these cards and we're going to call out your name to Jesus. And we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for your family. We're going to pray for your business. We're going to pray for your ministry. And we're going to believe with you that this will be your best yes ever. And so after you do that, we want to pray with you one more time. So after you lay this down, if you'll just return to your seat for a final prayer. But as the worship team leads us, would you come? Here's my name. 